Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. Got a CCNA and CCNP video practice exam for you. And as we lead into that, we're going to be here on the live equipment in about 20 or 30 seconds. Just a quick look at our exciting new website that's going to be launching here very shortly. Uh, as I record this on April 2nd, I would say shortly is probably within 60 days. I, I know that's a really relative term, uh, but we've had our one major miscommunication with our web designer. Every major project has to have one of those. So now that we've got that done, we are on the way. So a lot of exciting stuff coming to TBA, all thanks to your support. Let's go ahead and jump to today's question, and it's going to be a kind of a lab built into this. So if you know the answer immediately, don't go anywhere because I've got a really important OSPF review for you here. Which one of the following commands will display the OSPF network type that is running on your Cisco router's serial zero interface? And I have to say one of the things that confused me with OSPF at first because, believe me, if you're just hitting OSPF and it takes you a while to get a hold of it for your NA exam, don't worry about that. You're not alone. That happens to everybody because, of course, you know, static routing is pretty straightforward stuff. RIP, not too many options, and then you're OSPF, and you're like, oh, my gosh. Uh, and one of the things with OSPF is that we have so many show commands, especially as compared to, say, RIP. So let's take a look at each one of these four exam uh, excuse me, commands, and you'll be better prepared for your exam. I've already got show IP OSPF neighbor up. And just going from left to right here, remember this neighbor ID, that is going to be your neighbor's OSPF RID and not necessarily the neighboring uh, interface IP address, if you will. And so here we've got one that's all twos. We've got one here, 172.23.23.3. Going from left to right, you're going to see the priority of that neighbor's interface, the OSPF priority. That's set to zero. So I did that manually because remind me, what's the default here? The default OSPF interface priority is 1. Now, we've got a state of full for our adjacencies, and that's always good. What does this DR other mean? So you're actually going to get about 10 practice questions at this one, I think. What does that DR other indicate? That it is neither the DR nor the BDR for this particular segment. So it's a DR other. That's our dead time. We know that's going to be four times hello time by default. The IP address of that neighbor. And then you've got the interface. And that is, of course, the interface name. But it doesn't say anything about the type of network it's on. So while there's obviously a lot of handy information here and it's a command we need to be very well versed with, it is not going to show us the network type that's running on it. Let's try show IP OSPF networks. And it doesn't really look like there's any such command, right? Because that caret indicates to us where the issue is coming in. So when you see the caret at this point, it's saying the iOS is saying you are fine until you got all the way up here. So you can see that neighbor is the only command that even begins with show IP OSPF NE. So we know that neighbor isn't correct, even though it's a helpful command. And we know that networks is incorrect because there's no such command. Now let's try show IO, IP OSPF interface serial zero. Let me make sure that's the order I had it on the board. Show IP OSPF interface serial zero. There we go. Let's try that command. And a ton of information here, just about all of it helpful, and really all of it that you'll use on a regular basis. It's going to show you the IP address of the interface that you specified. It's going to show you what area it's in. The process ID, remember that OSPF process ID is locally significant only. It's going to give you the OSPF RID of the local device and the network type. So this command will definitely do what we were asked. There's the network type again. Let's look at what else it shows you. It shows you the cost of that interface. It shows you if it's the DR, BDR, or a DR other for that segment. Shows you the interface priority. Uh, shows you where the DR is, and it's telling us 123.1. It's also telling us there's no backup designated router on this network. And since this is an NBMA network, I built a hub and spoke for us to work with today, we're not going to have a BDR for that uh, particular network type. That's why I set the spoke routers interfaces on the other routers to zero, and that's why we saw that priority of zero here. 
So a ton of information here. Again, some of this information here you might not use terribly often, the flood scan length, that kind of thing. I wouldn't be too concerned about that, especially for the CCNA. But there's some good info down here. How many neighbors do you have? Uh, you know, and what are they? And, you know, are you suppressing hellos? That's, again, not something you're going to worry about for your NA exam. But a lot of helpful information there. So that answer would definitely be right. Now, what about just good old show IP OSPF? What does that give us? It gives us some helpful information. It's going to show us the routing process. And a lot of information here, it's kind of referring to some LSAs and some, oh, actually LSAs, how many areas the router's in. That can certainly be helpful, of course. Uh, it shows you the area. Here's the backbone area, zero, we know. There's one particular value in this level or this part of the screen that you should really watch if you're troubleshooting. And that's how many times the SPF algorithm has been executed. Because in a stable network, you're really not going to see that increment, certainly not on a regular basis. But if you have, say, a flapping link, you know, a link that goes up 15 seconds, then down per minute, and then keeps doing that, as the network is removed from your table and then it's put back in, of course, that is the result of an SPF algorithm re-execution or recalculation. So if this number is incrementing on a regular basis, then you have an unstable network. You have some kind of issue there. But one thing you do not see in show IP OSPF is simply the type of network that a given interface is in. So we looked at four really helpful show commands for OSPF today, but the only one that showed us the information we were asked for, again, was show IP OSPF interface serial zero. Again, just a word to the wise here, and I've never forgotten how overwhelming the CCNA can be, especially when you get to OSPF, because it's a whole new world. You know, like I said, RIP's pretty simple, but don't let it overwhelm you. Just take it one piece at a time, learn one command at a time, and you will be more than fine. I hope you'll join me out on my Twitter page and on YouTube and Facebook as well. Thanks for watching today's video. I'm Chris Bryan, and thanks for making TBA part of your Cisco certification success story.